Welcome to part seven of our local co-op game drop-in, drop-out multiplayer game project that we're working on. In this episode, I want to look at making the coin spawner a bit smarter, because currently, if we play the game and we add in player two, the coins start spawning, um, and eventually they will start to spawn inside each other and like very close to each other. If we had um, objects in the world, like walls and things like that, uh, they'd be spawning inside the walls and kind of then it spawned inside the player. Uh, what we wanted to be able to do is make them choose a safe place to spawn and then spawn so we can support more interesting level layouts. So that's what we'll do in this episode. So the first thing I want to do, um, I'm actually going to make a static helper script uh, to have this on so we can use it in any way we want in the game. It's not a, a method that we're going to put specifically on any one object uh, because it could come in handy in multiple places. So. In our scripts folder, which I'm going to move all of these over to, just drag them over. Okay, so in our scripts folder, we want to make a new script, which we're going to just call all helper. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Go away. So, all right, double click helper, bring that up. First things first, get rid of mono behavior because so we're not attaching it to a object. Um, we're just going to say public static class helper, and then we don't need the starter updates. Okay, so let's get a public static vector three method, and we'll call it a safe spawn point. Okay, well, that was a bit of a nightmare debugging session. Right, so current, like, uh, where I believe I left it, because um, it has been a few hours trying to figure out what was going on. Um, we had made a helper script um, that looked a lot different to this. Uh, the helper script I have now changed. Uh, so it's still the same, so we can access it anywhere, because it could be quite useful in the project. Um, but instead of returning a vector three of a position, um, it's now returning a bool, and it's going to check whether that position is actually safe to spawn the coins. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to make a new ray, and we're going to pass it in the random spawn position that we've chosen, and we're going to offset that position by ten just to raise it up so we can get a nice clear like beam down. Uh, and that ray is going to go down, like we said. Uh, I had a hit variable here. We don't actually really need that, but it may come in handy if we want to do any more stuff with that hit variable, so we'll keep it for now. Um, and then we've also got if physics.sphercast, and then we'll pass in the ray, um, a search radius, because we're doing a sphere cast, not a ray cast, so a ray will come down, and then it'll cast a sphere kind of on the ground. Um so obviously our coins on a thin point we need to double check that they're not going to insect each other or the walls uh, we're providing a search radius for the sphere cast so that could be the collider radius of the coin or the um basically the how big you want the sphere on the ground to be hello dan from the future here uh i don't think i really explained the physics cast uh, the sphere cast very well so i just wanted to go over what happens uh on the sphere cast so uh we have our ground plane here what we're doing is the coin spawner is picking a random position on the ground and then what the sphere cast is doing is it's taking this position offsetting it by sort of 10 f which is just an arbitrary number that could be anything and then it's going to from this point that it's chosen so say if that was say if we picked this spot it'd go up 10f it'd do a cast down from this position and then it'd do a cast down from this position with a normal 
Raycast and it'd check just this position here, um, which obviously the coins, as you can see, save this is the coin. Um, this position might be clear, but the but this position could also be clear. And now you'd see that the coins are overlapping. So what a sphere cast does is instead of casting a ray down like that, it'll cast a sphere down. And this sphere will go all the way along, kind of down, 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 and it'll check what it hits. And you see that the area that it's checking is a lot bigger. So now if the coin hits that and it's inside it, and ideally we need the sphere that it's that's being cast down um, to be bigger than the coin, which is why we put in the radius to either match the coin specifically or be a bit bigger. So in the video, I kind of made it seem like it comes down and then it searches, but what it's actually sending along that line, it's sending basically a really thick ray cast. So instead of a, so instead of a single point, it's actually searching almost like this. So now I'm going to be checking everything that's inside this here and it'll detect the coin and it won't be safe. So then it'll pick a different point. So say if it picks, say this is a coin already in the world and it picks this point and then it'll do its sphere cast down and it'll be like a thick ray cast. This space is completely clear. So it'll, It'll spawn a coin. Uh, I hope that all makes sense. I've tried to elaborate. Uh, also, I apologize for how miserable I sound in the rest of this video. Uh, it was literal hours trying to bug fix this because like I said, it was working in my other project. I don't know if I've done something wrong there and it's just I haven't noticed or if there was something bugged in this project, but you know, take what you can get, it works. So anyway, back to the video, thanks basically the how big you want the sphere on the ground to be. Uh, it's going to store anything that hits in the hit variable here. Uh, we're going to search for to infinity. It, we could just do like 100 sort of F, 50 F, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then this is the bit that really held me up. So we've got this layer mask here, which I've created a layer mask variable over here on the coin spawner. And if we look in the game at the game manager, I've set the layer mask to ground, which in my mind, we're masking out the ground so we shouldn't be detecting the ground. So when I had set this to everything but unchecked the ground, it wasn't working. If I set it to just ground, it wasn't working. Um, so in the end, uh, and I don't know why this is, if you do know or could provide any hints, that'd be great if you leave a comment down below. Uh, we just have to put this little tilde sort of sign which flips the um which kind of like inverts the layer mask to me that seems wrong but it's working at this point as long as it's working not really bothered um so what this is going to do now is it's going to debug.log i hit a collider the collider name and then it's going to return false uh, we don't actually need this debug.log uh, i'm going to keep it though just so we can see what's happening um or else it's safe to spawn here, we can return true. Now, over in our coin spawner script, so I've got while spawn coins, uh, I've got the enumerator spawn coins, so whilst true, which can keep on looping. Um, I've put this, I've lowered this from 1 and 1.5 to something smaller just so I could check that it was working. Uh, and I also took the code out of this playlist count so I didn't have to keep on pressing start on my controller. Um, now it's working, I can move that back in, um, but I'll just show you it working first. Um, so we're getting a vector three chosen position, which is a new vector three, and we're gonna assign a random position to that. Now the reason we have to assign it is because we're using it here and here. If instead of chosen position, we just had random spawn position method, it'd pick a random one here and it'd be a random one here and they wouldn't match. So we need to, so this is our chosen position is it is it safe and is it um so is it safe at that position using this layer mask and then i've also passed in the radius because obviously the coins are one size if we wanted to check for something else we could put a different radius in 
um, and then I'm going to instantiate coins uh, array index zero uh, at this chosen position and just the transform rotation of the game manager, which should just be normal and upright. So now if we go back to Unity, and I pray this works. No reason it shouldn't. It was just working a second ago. You can see it here. So we hit play. So it's spawning in coins. And if we just pause it for a second. So we've got I hit coin mesh, I hit coin mesh. It's safe to spawn here. So then that would have spawned. Um, that would have been one of these coins It's safe to spawn. Uh, you can see now that the coins aren't intersecting with each other. There are no coins inside the geometry. And we can just carry on playing. So they're not intersecting anything or each other. Uh, and then we can obviously go collect them all. So that's it for this video. Uh, I got there in the end. Um, bit of a pain it took so long, but there we have it. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when the next episode of this series is coming out. Um, the project files for this are over on my Patreon, which you can find linked below. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.